Hello everyone and welcome to the CUFAI Invitational Cup Final uh, between Bray Institute of Further Education and IADT Dunleary. Uh, I'm Adam Lennon and I'm here with Colin Fortune and Colin we've had I suppose a great week of it. Um, some great games, some interesting games. Our last game, Marino Institute and ATU Galway went to penalties, so more of the same. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope more of the same. Um, it's been a great week. A lot of very, very good football. You know, the level of college level of colleges and universities football is getting bigger and bigger, and the the quality is improving every year. And this year is no differently. Um, this is going to be an inter interesting game. You know, it's really a local derby between Bray and Dunleary and it's going to be interesting to see how this game goes. Yeah, and firstly we'll run through the teams, but you will have to bear with us as they are handwritten and unlike the rest of the games, they are not down from the printout. So firstly, starting with the Bray Institute of Further Education, in goal, number one, Sheriff Atibi, uh, number two, Otaniel Badika, number three, Chris Lonigan, number four, Abdul Abderrahman, Number five and captain Aldolan Desang. Number six, Jude Imdal. Number seven, Ibdu Mesaj. Number eight, Safani Umar. Number nine, Ushin Kali. Number ten, Fallon Niang. And number eleven, Solomon Oladeo. And the IADT team is as follows Number one, Lucas Kelly Vot. Number two, Sean McNamara. Number three, Jack Layler. Number four, Jonathan Massoum. Number five, Nicole Lyons. Number six, Stephen Tate Brown. Number seven, Casper Agowski. Number eight, Erasmus Aji. Number nine, Max Ryan. Number ten, Manuel Pelez Perez. And number eleven, Ayo Adebisi. So, Colin, I suppose this is the, the final final game of the week. And you know we've seen some great quality football and you know what are you what are you looking forward to in this game in particular yeah you know this this is going to be interesting um, we, we've seen Bray we know what Bray are about you know they're a big physical strong side with some very very good footballers you know they have a long throw in them that's going to be a threat um, Dunleary are a bit of an unknown you know we haven't seen too much about them you know by looking at their players they seem fairly strong on paper and you know we're just going to see how, how, how this plays out yeah, and I suppose we better tell you how Bray and Dunleary got to this final. Bray beat MTU in their semi-final, who were very strong. MTU Curry B, that is 2-1. The Better Selves, TUS Midlands, D, 7-2. And the Brett Griffith College, 13-2. So they've scored a lot of goals on the way to the final. Yeah, 13-2. Scored 13 goals in any game is a, a me no mean feat. Um, you know, it just shows they have goals in them as well, and some of them teams there along the way are, are good teams, and they took pe beating. So um, they're here on Merlet, you know, and you know, rightly so. So we're, we're going to see wh how they get on in this final. Yeah, and for Dunleary, the bet clashed to Ida on penalties in the last round. That scoreline finished two all with beating Cavan Institute five one. And Cavan Institute, we'd seen them; they actually hosted a game in TUS during the year, and they were a strong outfit. Poor Cavan were a very, very good side, so I'm, I'm actually surprised at that. So I didn't realise that. That's, a, that's again, no mean feat in that, and that just shows the pedigree they have. We can see it on paper with the players they have, and you know that just shows an example that they're a very, very good side as well. So this is going to be tighter than what I probably imagined as well, and you know there's a bit of, you know, a bit of a derby. The players will know one another for being local, for being from the one kind of area, and there might be a bit of bite in this, which will add to the atmosphere and the, the game in itself. Yeah, and I suppose we better tell you for the viewers at home that Dunleary are kicking off this first half playing left to right in the red kit, wearing red red tops, white shorts and the red socks. And Bray are playing in a Bray Wonders kit that might be familiar with most. It's the green and white, the traditional green and white of Bray with the green and green socks. Yeah, they're... There hasn't been any kind of set play yet, but it's a bit of a mistake there from the right side of centre half from Dunleary. Yeah, I think we, we've just seen exactly what way Bray are going to set up. They want to play through it, and Dunleary have put a bit of pressure on here, particularly here, Lonning in the left back. He didn't get much time on the ball, and, you know, they've won a free kick just inside their own half, and, you know, they're, they're not going messing about. They're going putting this ball into the box, and they're going to play off that. 
Yeah, and it's the centre half, Nicole Lyons. He just looks to ping it back stick. I think that's going to be met by a beret ahead, and it is struggling to clear their lines. And the centre half for Abdul Adarima gets a clear. Good pressure by the Bray centre forward, and that's one thing I noticed from coaching against them, Colin, is their willingness to, to work and, you know, put teams under pressure. No, you can see that from the start here. You know, they're, they're willing to go and press the game. They, they believe in themselves. They, they, they obviously have a, a high level of fitness, and they're not afraid to press from the front, and they're, they've started off all that. They're not going to give you much time on the ball. Yeah, Bray just looking to set the tempo here but it's a risky ball into the middle finds the number 8 for Bray Sufan Amur goes back to his centre half and Bray are just going to look to build up from the back but that's a mistake and it's picked up by the number 6 Stephen Tail Brown Bray look to break here now with the right back with Daniel and that's well covered by the centre half, Nicole Lines, or Nicole Lines, should I say? Yeah, I'm say go the the brave fo the brave forward there tried to get on the run behind the Dunleary defence, but it was well protected and well cut out. And it's a throw in here, and here we see our first sign of this long throw. This yeah. is a missile. Yeah, Oshin Kelly, <laughs> we conceded four against this up in Bray, so and look at that, it's a Rory de Lap esque. Yeah, it's, it's just the second ball they didn't pick up there, Colin. But yeah, they still no, have it. <laughs> it's some tr it's some weapon to have in your your arsenal, and that's going to be a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's especially with these conditions as well. It's hard to read the, the flight of the ball from the defenders, and you know when it breaks, you just wanted to break the one of your one of your players. Yeah, and Lucas Kelly and his centre half, Jonathan Masoom, just got a mix up between them, but. Yeah. yeah, you know yourself, Colin, from coaching, especially with your time at Galway United, how dangerous and how effective long throws can be. No, oh, set pieces are massive now, and you know them them throws are like corner kicks. They're coming in at pace and power, and you know they're nearly going to have to deal with them well to win this game today. Ball's whipped in, and it's going to be a free out. Paul Tone on the far side has his flag up. I suppose I better tell you who the officials are as well. It is David Jameson in the middle. It is James Murray on this dugout side. And his other assistant referee is Paul Tone on the far side. And it has to be said that the referees have been outstanding this week. And it's a credit to them because I know some of them have done back-to-back -back games and have been here all week. So, you know, tiredness can affect them as well. well yeah, absolutely. Um, They've done very well today. You know, we always say, you know, the referee, you shouldn't really know they're on the pitch. And this this week, this week they've been outstanding. They have, they've been very, very good. They let the game flow, and you know, they haven't got involved in much. Yeah, but Bray failed to deal with that there, and he, the right back for Bray, Otaniel Patiga, fit athletic player on that right hand side does well to just cut out Ao Adubisi on that left hand side for Dunleary, but that's a mistake. And Sheriff. A TB in the Bray goal, it gets away with one there. Yeah, Risky play, Colin. Yeah, a TB was very, very lucky there. He was a bit casual on the ball, you know, and to be fair, number nine there for Dunleary. Max Ryan put him under an awful lot of pressure, and a TB was lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, again, they're just playing that risky football. Yeah, well, it's, it's risk to reward. That, that, that's it, Adam, exactly. It's risk reward. You know, they got away with one or two earlier on, and, you know, but. You know, the, the percentage of football, they'll get caught sometimes if they're not careful. Bray pick it back up in the middle here. But that's blocked down again by Erasmus Aji, the captain of Dunleary. Well worked out wide to the left hand side. I think it's the number 10, Manuel Perez, has gone over on the left hand side. And he just looks to play it into the middle to the number 6. Lucky that there isn't a foul given away by the Bray men, but they can counter here now. There's an overload on this side for in aid of Delary, but he can only keep going anyway. Switches on. Oh, it's a great ball. <laughs> Good ball. Yeah, the Bray number ten, the Yang dropped in there, picked up the ball, and there was a great run forward there by the by the number nine for Bray. You know, um, Ushin Kelly, and he was nearly picked out by Niang, and it just shows another threat straight down the middle as well. They have. 
Yeah, and we're, we're talking about Ushin Kelly and the long throw, but it's the his opposite number nine, Max Ryan, who's on the attack here now. And it's well put out by the brave skipper, Usang. Yeah, good defending to Usang because if he got by him that time, you know, there was a real threat in the goal. These are dangerous situations here because with that wind, uh, you know, a bit of quality from the set pieces will put Bray under se serious pressure here. Yeah, and interestingly enough, Bray have only left one out and they opt to take the short corner, Dun Leary. It's worked well between the two and that's going to be... Oh! It'd be... A Tavy in goal. I think that's going to be a free out and it's uh, yeah. given away by the number four from Dun Leary, Jonathan Masim. But that was risky play from the... The break keeper, I thought he could have caught it there, Colin, but he, he just kind of punched it into a, a yeah. dangerous area. Yeah, he elected to punch it rather than, rather than hold on to it. Um, he got away with it that time. Maybe maybe the conditions are, are more difficult than we thought, and maybe the, the ball was swerving, but um, you know he definitely got away with one of them. Yeah, and one thing, <laughs> it was lovely here about 20 minutes ago, but the, the sky has got done again, and the wind is starting to pick up, so it is, it's hard, it doesn't look it on the camera, but it is actually hard conditions out there at times. Ushin Kelly in behind, and I, th I think that's his boot gone flying, it's nearly gone as far as the ball, but the keeper makes it, it's a goal! It's a goal! It's the number 10, Fallon Niang, and Colin, it has to be said, it's a mistake from the goalkeeper. It, it, yeah, it's a big one. It was a big bounce, and I thought he had it comfortably, but um, he, he f seemed to fumble it. I don't know if something if he got got caught in it. It wasn't the sun or that, but he seemed to lose flight of it, and you know he flapped it. And Niang, with a good header, to be fair, following up, and headed the ball into a, a, an empty net. Yeah, it's good at hacking instincts, I suppose. And from a a brave point of view, I was just commenting on how Ushin Kelly's boot nearly went further than the ball. You see here, Gunnery, oh, it's a great header to yeah, be fair. We're just, looking, we're just looking at the replay here, and you know, it, it, it bounced up wickedly, so it didn't the goalkeeper, and he just never got high enough to hold on to it. And you know, he fumbled it, and there was Niang on hand just to head the ball into an empty goal. And it's 1 0 Bray, you know, good early start for them, but Dunleary will have to, you know, try and get straight back into this game. Yeah, and look, this game is, is far from over. 1-0, nine minutes gone here. But Bray would certainly be happy because they haven't really had a, any attempts on goal, but they're 1-0 up. Yeah, football can be a strange one day. One time, put the ball into the box, you don't know what's going to happen. We've seen it here with a shot from long distance that, you know, unfortunately the keeper yesterday let fall into his net. So, you know, you have to put the balls in the box and get people around there and anything can happen. Yeah, and Dunleary, they just need to settle themselves again because they've had a few attacks. They just haven't had any real clear-cut chances, but, you know, a few set pieces, and we're discussing set pieces could be key in this game, especially with that long throw. Yeah, absolutely. Another trade-up forward. Max Ryan looks looks busy up front, and your man Perez looks tidy, neat and tidy as well in, in midfield, and he, he, he's a, he'll be a threat. If they give him space and time on the ball, he'll create chances. Yeah, Sean McNamara for the Dunleary side just going to get us restarted here it's flicked on by that man Max Ryan centre forward it's just going to be cleared out again for another Dunleary throw yeah Breer struggling to clear the lines here and you know and that's credit to Dunleary putting the pressure and keeping the ball up and deep into their half yeah that's going to be another throw McNamara's arms will be getting tired by, by the end of this sequence it seems yeah absolutely Bray look to clear. It's cleared off McNamara. And that's gonna run into the goalkeeper Atebi. Yeah, good good defensive duty by Niang who scored up here. It was a more of an offensive player, but it just shows he wants to do his defensive duties also. Yeah, it's a it's an awkward bounce on the ball for the Dunleary centre half to clear. Ball's gonna bounce. And it looks like it's the setup from Bray is interesting. It looks like they're playing with a five at the back, and you th they're kind of switching between it. And the centre half, the skipper, uh, the skipper for Bray, Osang, is just dropping in and picking the pockets. He's nearly playing as a number six at times when Bray are in possession. 
That's right, that's right. But it, what it's, that's right, but what it's doing also is it's, it's allowing Bray to get two up front when the ball goes up. And Yang here as a kind of a makeshift wing back is pushing right on also. Yeah, and now Kelly on this left-hand side looks to take on McNamara, but <laughs> I think this is going to be a long throw. <laughs> the two centre halves are coming up anyway, so I think there's only one place this ball is going. Yeah, and I, I must say, looking from here, Bray seemed to have a significant height advantage on them. I think that's going to be won by the Bray. Man. Yeah, and it's a goal kick. Yeah, it's but it just bounced over him. Yeah, it, l it looks like the two centre halves are big boys, and they're going up there, and you know they'll need the Linwood. Yeah, and one thing about that throw in from Mushin Kelly is he didn't hit it with as much pace. I thought it, he could have just fired it in, make the you know the defenders work for it. Yeah, compared to the one in the th that he previously did. Yeah, there's more loft than that. So it could be the, d the conditions as well, Adam. Into that wind, it could be holding the ball up a, a little bit. But um, you're you're dead right. Yeah, and that's just going to run out a bit of a speculative effort from Max Ryan. We're on about how busy he's been in these opening stages, but again, we just see it on the replay here. He turns, but I'm not sure. It's just uh, it's too just far out yeah, anyway. Yeah, he just snatched that at, at the end, yeah. Just need to link up play a bit more and get a bit closer to goal. Great play out by the Bray midfield. He's come to the right back, Otaniel Bagita. And that's just... <laughs> I think that's a bit of a mix of mitosis, we'll call that. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, he got a bit confused there, <laughs> so he did. Yeah, Solomon Odelli on this left-hand side. They're very fluid in their formation, Bray. You can see that they're working on it. And I was, you know, chatting to them after we played them up in Bray, and they were saying, like, how many hours they do actually work together, which is a big advantage, especially at this level, because of, you know, sometimes you're meeting teams that aren't really football based and you're playing like we were it's our d team you know so when you can put them hours and especially when it starts working on the pitch it's great to see yeah no absolutely it makes a huge difference you can see in the rotation alone that and when they're looking to receive the ball they all look so comfortable on the ball and you know their confidence in themselves even trying to play out here you know they, they want to play out all the time they want to play the game the right way and so far they've got away with it but um they just you know to take a lot of chances that Dunleary with the pressure the button on may catch them. Yeah, and I think Ocean Kelly might be in here. He has to keep going on the press and he does enough. And this could be trouble if it goes out for a throw in because Ocean Kelly is gonna run straight over and try and fire it into it. the three big centre halves are coming up. Yeah, it was good pressure good pressure from Ocean on the goalkeeper in the centre half there. And this is coming right in on top of them again. Chris Lonigan in there on the back as well. Just you know, th this is where they might go. Yeah, and it's going to win the first ball, go. and oh, it's the number three. Yeah, Chris I think Chris Lonigan at the back stick. Yeah. You just mentioned him, Colin. He was kind of left free. That's a great flick on by the skipper. Yeah, he's just he's just pulling out of there. He's not really interested, and then he's just making a run at the last minute. You know, he it needs to be watched. It seems to be applied or working on. But they've, they've got first, con first contact on two occasions now with balls coming in from long throws and Dunleary really need to deal with that first contact. They need to get their heads in the ball first. Yeah, it's the, it's the risk that if you don't win the first ball and it drops, you're in trouble. But they're in trouble with their own kick out here. It's the right full Otaniel on that right-hand side. He does well to keep possession. He's going to run at the defender here and he's gone past them. Kelly's in the middle if he can find him. And it's just that it's not the best delivery in the world, Colin. No, no, he tried to pull it back there. He did. He done very well initially to get to the end line, and he tried to pull it back. But to be fair, it was very, very good defended by by Stephen Brown there to cut that out. And he he's gone to he's got the Dunleary up the pitch, and they've got to throw in deep in the Bray half. Yeah, and Perez. I thought he was going to take a quick there, but he's just letting his his teammates get up the pitch because they have been under the cosh for the past two or so minutes. To have, to have, to seem to have a serious uh, advantage here with the with the wind, Bray. You know, Dun Dunleary are having trouble clearing their lines. Even the goalkeeper we seen a, a little while ago, his kick out is barely reaching the halfway line. So, you know, he's putting himself in serious, you know, threat straight away. Yeah, and I suppose Dunleary with all these throw-ins, they nearly wish they had Ocean Kelly on their side. They they could launch it into the box because they are struggling with the conditions, but they'll keep possession here with the left back. Unfortunately for them, Kelly's going up to win that one. I think that's going to be another throw into the Leary side. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing ahead of 
there was nothing ahead of Kelly there to, to flick it onto. That's the only thing when the centre forward drops in. I know he's trying to be effective and get involved in the game, but when he wins it, then there's just no one up there. No, yeah, no, that's up to Niang and that to try to get up around them and try to make them runs past the centre forward. Yeah, and Perez is on it here now, and I think, oh, it's a bit of a foul, but that's going to be a free out. But the referee waves it on. He's assisting on the far side, was flagging for it. But yeah. Jemison in the middle. Dave Jemison in the middle of the park decided it's not going to be free. You see it on the replay, Colin. I'm not yeah. sure if that probably he should might be free yet. Yeah, he might have caught him, but I think the defender made a lot of it as well. And I think David Jemison is laying down a marker here. Listen, if it's a foul, I'll give it. Don't don't make don't make it into a foul by jumping on the ground. Yeah, and we want to see the referee, you know, let the game flow. There's nothing worse than a stop-start game. No, absolutely. Nothing the final game anyway. Yeah, and that's going to be offside. I'm not sure who it was from Dunleary. Yeah, it's from the flick on there. Perez was it that got himself into an offside position. You can probably hear the, the wind picking up in our microphones more than anything, so you can imagine what conditions are like down the pitch, especially from Dunleary trying to clear their lines. But that's well worked, and it's Niang, and he's going to look in behind here to his left winger. And Niang's going to get on it again. Does well, switches on the far side. Kelly tries to get something on it. McNamara will win that surely. He will win it. It's well dealt with McNamara, but he puts his teammate under pressure, and it's won back by the Bray, and Niang's going to play it forward. And that's clear from Dunleary, but good pressure from Bray once again. But yeah, a very good link-up play here be between Niang and Oladeo here, and they nearly got to the end line to get balls in the box. And Kelly, I know Kelly's a threat with his long throws, but he looks like he's bringing players into play as well. He's he's willing to get the ball in front of into him and hold it up and link up play, which yeah. is good by the he's centre forward. He's probably just lacked that that final pass so Absolutely. far, but he's thrown himself about here, Kelly, and he's going to win it. McNamara is getting stuck in, and it's well won by the right back from Dunleary, but Kelly will get on it again, and he's going to get there. He is to the far side. If Kelly can find him, it takes his time, but I think that's going to be a goal kick and. Kelly, he just didn't get his head up quick enough, Colin. No, he didn't. He done great to get. He, he got himself in that position himself by his hard work and his, you know, hassing and hurt. And just when he get there in the end line, you know, he probably his left foot wasn't as comfortable to pull it back with his left foot. He probably should have. Probably should have just pinged it across. But that's well won back again and by O'Taniel on that right hand side. They look to build. There's two in the middle. Kelly's not going to win it, and it's going to go straight into the keeper's hand. Lucas Kelly Foy. But again, it's 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 constant pressure from Bray and Dunleary just haven't had the answer to it yet. Yeah, no, it's been great pressure by Bray. They're not letting Dunleary have a second on the ball. And Kelly does the right thing and just go along and he finds his centre forward, Max Ryan, who's working hard. He gets there. Can he feed? Oh, it's chance here. Oh, Perez. Oh, he has to keep it down. That was a massive opportunity. Max Ryan done exceptional here and then... He just nicked it through to Perez and you know of all players you wanted to fall to is Perez and he just bounced up and Yeah he, and you can he see he just bar. has his heads and his <laughs> hands and his head and his head and his hands. <laughs> yeah, but that's that a great a, chance. That was a massive opportunity. One thing thing about Bray is they have scored goals, but they've conceded goals as well along the way. They haven't any clean sheets, but saying that Dunleary having any clean sheets either so far in the competition. McNamara trying to get to it here. Niang's in. Niang has been lively so far, Colin. No, he's done very well. Very tidy in the ball and he likes it. He, he's very good at linking up. Yeah, no, he's been good. He's been good so far. And again, we just see the pressure again being applied to Dunleary defenders. This yeah. time by the, the midfielder. Yeah, and like we, Ushin Kelly's coming over to take this now, but he's a good 30, 40 yards away from goal so it just shows you the faith they have in his long throw yeah this is one they really really work on anything in there half at all is going into the box it's thrown in but Kelly can they get first contact again no Dunleary finally and it's the centre half number 5 Nicole Lyons good defending but, you yeah. know, he's getting his head to it now he he didn't do to the first two the first one or two balls coming in so that's good he's getting his head to it. I know it's, he, it's gone out for a corner kick but 
you know that gives him confidence that he can go and attack it and he will win it yeah and Lions and Usang they seem to be marking each other at every set piece so it's a battle to keep an eye on especially from this corner kick that Niang is going to come over and take with in swinger especially with these conditions can be dangerous signals one hand Swift in should be the keepers and it's very well claimed from the goalkeeper from Dunleary yeah, Lucas Kelly White. That was well taken out of him. Oh, the bounce has him, I think. And it's well defended in the end, and I think that's going to be a free out. But just for a second there, I thought Max Ryan had the ball won. It's great goalkeeping, I must say, from Lucas Kelly Watt. He just yeah. catches it, launches it, trusts his centre forward to do the hard work, and he's unlucky not to be in there. Yeah, good defending by Oladeo. I thought he was beaten at one stage, but he regrouped and got back in around. Max Ryan and you know kept Max Ryan out it's just a risk of letting that ball bounce you know especially when you're under pressure from a centre forward and a centre forward that's as hungry as Max Ryan who's going to keep working hard and chase down everything that's right once, once the ball had bounced Oladeo oh, was in trouble can't let that ball bounce in there and that's an unfortunate pass from the number 6 Jude Tyndall he's going to try and win it back here now it's going to be a free in, James. David Jemison in the middle. He's given a free in to Dunleary and a chance for them to get the ball into the box. And yeah, there's good refereeing again. He let it, he tried to let it go, tried to play advantage, but there was no advantage, so he pulled it back for a free kick. Just signs over the last minute or two that Dunleary are trying to are, are creating a few more chances and getting a lot more possession in, in the Bray half. Yeah, they probably just need a bit more control possession and keep the ball moving because Bray, when they do get it, they are keeping it. So it's it possession in this game is valuable, I suppose, from a sense of build up and stopping the other team getting forward. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, and it's the early pressure as well that they're, they're going to create the chances. Oh, it's a great flick on by Kelly. Can Nian get there? It's well swept up by the Dunleary keeper again. It's well taken down. Probably needed a shout there. Number four, John Masum, I think it is, from Dunleary. To pick it up here again with McNamara on the right back position. Looks for his winger partner, but that's well covered across by number three, Chris Lonigan again. Yeah, no missing there by Lonigan. But it was a good run, run earlier on by, by Niang getting in behind the centre forward and he nearly got in the ball, just ran away in the end too. Yeah, it's that third man run, it's so difficult to deal with. The midfielders are looking to the defenders. Are you picking him? Am I picking him? But here's a chance for Dunleary. I think they're going to go short with this one. No, they have sided against it. Yeah, they're just going to launch this one into the box. Should be a Bray ball, and it's well won there at the back. Chance for Bray to maybe counter here. Kelly's in on the far side if they can find him. But it's gone to the, the right wing back, and that's just overplayed by O'Taniel on that far right-hand side. But positive signs from Bray on that counter. Yeah, no, Kelly had just come short to try to receive it, and the fullback went in behind him. Just miscommunication there. Oh, that's well won here, and Kelly's in. It's strike. Oh, it's off the crossbar. Oh, it's a good strike from Ushin Kelly up top. Yeah, great strike. Great touch from his left onto his right. And it was a great, great strike. Off the crossbar. And luckily enough, it fell back into the goalkeeper's hands. 50-50 ball here is won by Lonigan again. That centre half position. Left side of centre half of the back three. He's going to get the ball back here from his number 10, Niang. They're just braid looking to build up from the back again. Compose possession, trying to build on every every chance they get. Build from the back, keep the ball moving from side to side. Yeah, they're, they're good in possession, to be fair. They like, they like to keep possession of the ball. Yeah, and I think the big pitch is suiting them here today because they're loud. That's a great ping from Niang. If you can get there. I think that's going to be a foul, and it is a foul, and it's the number three, Jack Lader, on that left-hand side from Dunleary has committed the foul on number seven, Messon. And it's a chance 
with that strong breeze for Niang to whip it into the box and send all the big men forward. Yeah, I think Jack Laylor was lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, he's probably looking to get away with not being booked yeah, there, I suppose. Abso absolutely. Messong was away there. He got a good head in the ball and he knocked it into space and he, he seemed to be get away from the fullback. And Niang seems to be the man to whip it in, whether it's an in swing or out swinger. So I think they're just mm. trusting his right boot. And from what we've seen so far, I can understand why. Yeah, no, it's been good. It's whipped in, back stick. There's a ball, he's all over the place. And I think that's going to be an offside. Yeah, Paul Tone on the far side, he's given it offside. And Dunleary, take a quick. It's come out to the right hand side here. There's two runners in the middle. If he can put his head up. Is that it's Niang across after taking the free kick straight away doing his defensive duties? Yeah, he done well. He done very well there to, to cut out that. Pressure from Bray and you you can hear their manager screaming, demanding, I suppose, that they put the press on and that's gonna be a Dunleary ball. McNamara can come over and take the restart again. Yeah, player, players on both sides are getting too, not getting too much time in the ball at this minute. I suppose it, it has that derby feel to it, you know, the intensity is good, the, the probably the early goal from a Bray point of view has given them that little extra boost, but there's certainly there's a bit of bite in this, column. No, there absolutely is, I think we expected that anyway, but um, no, there is, and you know, the pressure being applied by both teams is very, very good. It's just to see how long both teams can apply that pressure for, because this game will get opened up, it will get stretched, and then, we, you know, it'll be a different type of game then. Yeah, and that's going to be a free out to Bray, and I <laughs> look, they're going to look to build up again. I'm not sure who gave away that foul on this occasion. There was bodies everywhere, but uh, that's he's turned into trouble here, and Perez, if he can get away, and I think that's going to be a free in. Perez did very well, just got his body in front. Yeah, that was clever play. just stepped across the midfielder and took his free. Knew he was going nowhere. There was three Bray players around him, and he, he just took his free kick. And this is a dangerous situation for Dunleary. Yeah, and it's probably the best position they've had so far. The, you know, the the previous free kicks they were around the halfway line, especially against this gale force breeze. That you know the ball's always blowing back towards you rather than going towards the goal. So yeah. this is a good chance to get a decent ball and decent delivery into the box. Yeah, I'm just looking. It's a wonder Nick Lines didn't come up for this one because he seems to be good in the air. You know, they've kept three back uh, with the taker, four back, and probably not needed. It's whipped in, and it's going to be a free out for a push. I'm not sure. I think it was, is it Max Ryan, Max the, this, the centre forward, just with the push there? Yeah, it was. I think it was Max Ryan, yeah. They, they break captain to Sanj, done very well there. Just stepped in front of Max Ryan, and, you know, and Max Ryan pushed him in the back. Yeah, good battle there uh, down the Bray right hand side. It's going to be, it's going to be a free or a throw, and I'm not sure. I didn't hear a whistle, but uh, I think it's a free kicking, and Niang is coming over to take it, and all the big men are up from the back again. Seems to be a game of set pieces so far. Yeah, absolutely. Niang with the delivery. It's a great ball in. There's just no one to meet it from a Bray point of view. <laughs> And Lonigan, <laughs> Lonigan was lucky. I think he thought it was going out for a throw in anyway and just let McNamara go get it. But it is going to be an Ushin Kelly rocket of a throw again, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, in the box. You know, just looking at Lonigan, he picks up clever position so he does in the box. And it's a bit of a mismatch there. You know, you have Tate Brown, Stephen Tate Brown picking up Lonigan and that, that's a mismatch. And Kelly again, he winds up the throw. It's straight in at that near post. Flick. It's won by the Lanary man. Oh, it's a strike. Oh, and that's unlucky, unlucky. I think it's the number seven. Yeah. Number seven, Abdu Masang. And he's just unlucky with that. He just didn't, you know, get his head over the ball, Colin. Yeah, no, he, he done very well. It bounced up lovely for him. And it was a good strike from here. I thought it was closer than what it actually was. i just seen a replay of it. But um, it was a great opportunity. And... You know, he's just unlucky there. 
Yes, that's that second phase of the off the set piece and as there's a miscommunication on that right hand side from the number six and number three of Don Leary but Ushin Kelly they, they, this is mad surely he couldn't <laughs> be thrown in from here he's, he's at the if you look at him line. he's on the halfway line I don't think I'd kick it that far <laughs> no no there's there's many people that wouldn't kick it that far and that is I suppose he's still reached it and it, it's going to go out for a corner kick off the captain from Dunleary. Yes, it is. Paul Toll on that far side is giving the corner kick. And it's the captain from Dunleary. Erasmus Adji gives away the corner. But just shows you the halfway line. The, 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 the throw is just outstanding. Yeah, it, it, is, it really is some throw. And Niang, between himself and Kelly, must have hit every set piece for Bray. And we're just going to have to keep an eye on Lonigan in the Bray box. It's Kelly gets his boot to it. Kelly again, McNamara closes him down, and here we go. To be fair to Kelly, I know he's a long throw and he's on all the throws, but he, he works so hard for his team up there. You know, he doesn't give the Dunleary defenders a minute on the ball. Yeah, no, he, he really has. And you know, and we're going 32 minutes into the game. It's been non-stop from as he throws this ball in again. I think McNamara should win it. And Kelly, I think he's going to be happy enough to let it go out for a throw-in. I'd say he's getting tired of him. He only reached a six-yard box that time. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he looks fatigued out there all right with his arms. McNamara, I think, wins that. Oh, it's half swiped, half cleared away. Oh, and the Bray man has slipped. It could be a chance here. High boot maybe question of it yeah he got away with it he got away with it there was a bit of a break on there yeah and that should be dealt with but Lonigan will just pick it up again for Bray tries to play it forward should be a Dunleary ball the ball hasn't gone out though bit of a stoppage and Niang just kind of puts his boot through but it's gone spinning back and I think Oh, his teammate has reached it, but it'll be a Dunleary ball. Number six, Stephen Tate Brown. He's on it, nice one two. But it's played straight into Oshin Kelly. Might be a chance here now. Depends on which way the bounce goes. Nathaniel on that far side opts to just boot it nearly into the Gale Squell across the way. Yeah, no nonsense there. He was just clearing these lines there. But I, I can't get over the pressure and the work rate at Bray at the minute. You know, how long they're going to last doing this, I, I don't know. But, you know, it, it really is some amount of pressure to have a game plan and it's working. And, you know, they're winning the ball high up the pitch and the credit opportunities from it. Yeah, this is a, a massive pitch here in Lizzie Wool in Athlone Town Stadium. So, it, you know, it takes the there's elite teams that do come here and <laughs> the, the tire very early in games and with Bray with that constant pressure and work rate we'll see how long it lasts but so far so good for them no, they've been very good they've, they've been be the better team they've created more opportunities and you know, they've had the ball in the Dunleary box more than Dunleary have had it in the Bray box and a chance Kelly's going to not give up on this one anyway and it's half cleared away Niang should pick it up but it's well dealt with McNamara Ryan lays it to his captain he has two runners inside Oh, it's well won. Lonigan should get there. I think that's going to be a free out, and it's a free out. And it's the Dunleary man, Agatowski, just with a slight nudge in the back of Lonigan. But Lonigan got his body in well, and to be fair to him, bought that free kick for his side and relieves a bit of pressure. Yeah, they, they done well there, Dunleary. Dun 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 and Lonigan was very really clever getting his body in front of the, the ball and player, and he, he drew in the free kick, and he just you know, calmed it, calmed the situation down and got right back in possession of the ball. Yeah, if you're just joining us, 35 minutes gone in this CUFAI Invitational Cup Final between Bray Institute of Further Education and IADT Dunleary. It is 1-0 to the Bray side, an early goal from Niang, a header at the back stick after some... <laughs> questionable crossing from Ushin Kelly where his boot nearly went further than the ball but they'll take it all the same and they've been very impressive in these opening stages yeah no they've been they've been very good at 
you know they really have and you know they're some of their build up play is very good but they're caught here and a uh, linesman's going to get them out of trouble I think yeah. but that's you know that risk to reward they are going to keep playing out from the back and Agatowski on this occasion probably feels aggrieved to have been given a foul against him there yeah yeah no it was a good press and he, he was unlucky that was 50-50 uh, uh, you know I would have been disappointed for a free kick to be given against me but it just shows the pressure now that Dunleary are putting on Bray and you know if they win one of them they're nearly in on goal yeah, and probably the the only chance that Dunleary have really had in the half was was Max Ryan's little true ball, and we thought Perez could have done a bit better, lean back, but uh, that came from the press as well, and it's a it's been a feature of this game, the playing out from the back and Niang gets on it, Kelly's in here, he's not going to be given offside, he stood up by the Dunleary man, Kelly. He's nearly going to settle for a throw-in, and he has settled for a throw-in. And he, you know, s sometimes he's happier to just throw the ball in rather than take it on his left yeah, foot. I think it's easier on him. <laughs> yeah, he was happy enough to take this throw-in, and Breer getting set up again. Yeah, and Kelly is going to launch this one towards the six-yard box again. Kelly throws it in. First contact made by a delirry man. It's going to be hooked back in. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it was a lovely, lovely flick on. Uh, I see Paul Tone, the assistant referee, there with his flag up, so giving an offside. I think it was Zazanich coming back out again, you know. But but they got away with that. Defended initially very, very well done, Larry. It's just that second phase again at the edge of the box when it was held back in. They seem to be running out without marking. They need to come out marking their defend, marking their main. Yeah, it is. It's that second phase all the time, and it's something that you know five six seven minutes to go in this first half to, I suppose it, it's it's something for Derek McDonald and, and his team to, to maybe say to them at half time is lads look we're doing well with the throw-ins we dealt with them well they haven't caused us any trouble but that second phase we need to get tighter and if we're going to step out as you said we need to be marking up yeah absolutely no step up but step out with your men as the press is on here from Dunleary the keeper Tiba uh, he's done very well this the big five yeah Dosanji has done very well there Very he looks to be very very comfortable on the ball I'm very nervous at t of Atiba on the ball though. he seems very very casual the goalkeeper you know, yeah <laughs> it's something you know when your goalkeeper is that casual on the ball you don't know whether he just doesn't know what to do with it yeah. or he's just very confident what he's going to do with it I think he's looking at Kelleher a bit too much because <laughs> yeah. he has that sort of personality that and demeanour he, that demeanour yes yeah, and Ushin Kelly is going to walk over and look to launch this throw-in. A good 35, 40 yards from goal, but we've seen it already. It's no bother to him. Flick on by his skipper, Niang's in. Oh, good goalkeeping again by Kelly Watt in that goal, and he's going to look to go long. Perez is up there. Don't let the ball bounce, I suppose, will be the toss from the Bray, but it's well won between the two of them. Yeah, the two of them doubled up there and they done they done well. They learn from the first the first mistake, I think. Don't let it bounce and they they done well there to be fair. Yeah, and th there's a throw in here and I'm just surprised that uh Kelly isn't coming down to take this. I know it is in the Bray half, but still I wouldn't be surprised at this stage as Lanigan throws it back. Oh. Uh, it's a risky one. And he's yeah. very lucky to get away with that there because I thought the follow through caught Max Ryan Ryan has stayed down yeah definitely definitely follow through did catch him I don't think it was intentional no you I know, think it was just, he was just it clearing wasn't. the ball yes. he was just clearing the ball but uh, yeah, hopefully Max Ryan's alright yeah the, the throw in was just short and the ball was there for him to go for it but to be fair to Dusan the brave player you know he just cleared it and he caught him at the follow through he, there's nothing he could do with that yeah Dusan you know, he's been confident on the ball, as have the rest of the Bray team. But, you know, five minutes to go in this first half, Colin. If if you're in that, you know, Dunleary dressing room at halftime, you know, what what are you going to be saying to your side to try and get back into this? Yeah, I think I, I, I think it's just, you know, try to get more control of the ball in, in their half. You know, it's a bit hit and rush at time. It's a bit helter-skelter. You know, I was expecting it to be like that, but I didn't think it would be like that after 40 minutes, you know, of the Perez and the other guy up front you know um, Ryan Max Ryan could get a hold of the ball a bit more and maybe bring the wingers into play or bring the full backs into play you know it might help out a little bit 
Yeah, and you know, Max Ryan, he doesn't look the the most comfortable gentleman out there now after that little bang, but you know, hopefully from a, a Dunleary point of view it, it is just a kick and he hasn't twisted anything and you know, I suppose Bray if you're in that dressing room at half time, it, it's more of the same. I know there there's still four or five minutes left and probably mm -hmm. be one or two minutes ad additional time at the end of the half, but uh you know, same I suppose it's more the same. More the same, absolutely. You know, they've, they've been impressive in sp at spells. Yes, that once or twice at the back they've looked a bit, you know, uncertain. But th that's they're going to stick like that. That's that's their style of play. They're going to keep doing that. And you know, as you as you said, it's you know that's the way they are, and they're not going to change. And you know, when they get through, when it works, it looks very well. But you know, they're definitely create. They'll give up chances. They will. Yeah, and Max Ryan is back on the field here as Bray look to go forward, and Kelly's putting the center half under pressure here balls play forward Lonigan you know DeSange is there and his goalkeeper Mr. Casual we're going to call him yeah they're just looking yeah and Perez is going to have the press but they get the ball out on this right hand side and there's plenty of space to drive into it's played into the middle great turn by the Bray number 8 Sofan Amour Dusange plays it out to Lonigan on this left hand side Lonigan gets his head up Kelly makes the run in behind he finds Kelly Kelly does well probably should have just got his body in front there but they'll pick it up again and that ball's just given away Niang applying the pressure but it's well blown back again by Bray Niang with the strike but it's a great block and Dunleary just looked to clear up to Ryan and Ryan who's still kind of hobbling from that first challenge gives up to Agatowski but Lonigan again gets a clear Colin a bit scrappy yes no it, it's still a bit scrappy all right but um you know I think it, I think it will settle down Adam I just just that last little spell there a little bit um Dunleary had a 3v3 at the back. The, you know, the two wingers for Dunleary stayed high up the pitch. Oh. And, and I'm not sure yeah. if that was a handball here, but <laughs> a TV is yeah. going to be calm as man in the place. I'm nervous looking at him. Uh, yeah, and Dusanj just gets a clear. Mm. But the fourth official has indicated there will be two minutes of additional time here at the end of the first half. To be fair, it has been a free-flowing game. Maybe that just little injury to, to Ryan ha has brought upon that two minutes. Ryan goes to turn. Lonigan does well to get his body in front. I've been very impressed with Lonigan. I must say, he just used his body well. You know, he's been good on the ball. Looked to go forward at, at every occasion. And yeah, he looks solid. He looks look, look solid, to be fair to them. To be honest, the back three of Bray have looked very solid. Barred that one chance they gave up that Perez probably should have scored. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, yeah. Just like, but one chance given up in 45 minutes is not bad, and they've been on the ball a lot. Their distribution is quite good as well. Yeah, and Bray, they're going to stay on the attack here in these these final moments of the the first half. Can he find the cross? It's in Niang's there. McNamara takes it down. Very composed, probably a bit too composed for his manager's liking. Yeah, very composed defending. He done very very well. And that Dunleary now looked at canter but Max Ryan he just isn't moving as, no, as well as he was right. he, yeah. he just doesn't look right again if they can get it away there you know you're really one on one or two on two at the back for for Dunleary then if they, if they could break away that little bit quicker yeah and Ryan you know maybe the half time might just come at a, a good time for him especially so yeah. he can get that injury assessed and as Niang looks to, but McNamara wins the free kick Niang a frustrated figure down there I think Dunleary are just going to look to play this long. Send yeah. the centre halves up, yeah. Yeah, just going into the box. About a minute left in this first half. Bray lead, thanks to that Niang goal. Nine minutes in. Ball's whipped in. Well won by the Bray defender. Back to McNamara. McNamara looks to play his captain out wide. Does well. And again, good pressure from Bray. They have been non-stop in this first half. Yeah, they, have, they really have. They haven't give, given the Dunleary players much chance on the ball. Mac 
And <laughs> that's a foul throw by McNamara. You don't see them on many occasions, especially in adult football, but no. it does happen. Yeah, that's it. That's, it. that's frustration now by, by the, the manager of Dunleary. You know, there's a great chance, great position to get, you know, set something up and get the ball in the box. And, and David Jemison blows his whistle for the last time in this first half. It is Bray Institute of Further Education 1. IA DT Dunleary nil a goal coming after nine minutes from Fallon Niang and it's all to play for in this second half of the CUFAI Invitational Cup Final. We'll see you after the break.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Athlone Town Stadium at Lizzie Woolen for this CUFAI Invitational Cup final between Bray Institute of Further Education and IADT Dunleary. The halftime score is Bray Institute of Further Education 1, Dunleary 0. Uh, Falu Nia goal after 9 minutes after a bit of a mistake from the Dunleary keeper but uh, it's all to play for in this second half, Colin. Yeah, no, really looking forward to the second half now. Uh, Dunleary need to try and get possession further up the pitch. But um, in that first half, Bray just never allowed them to get any possession of the ball. They've been pressing high. They've been har harassing the, the Dunleary player in position. And, you know, it was, it was a very impressive performance in that first half by Bray. Yeah, and Bray will play left to right in this second half with their main man, Ushin Kelly, the number nine. If you're just after joining us, Ushin Kelly, and his launch of a throw, he's about 35, 40 yards away, nearly, at, he's actually at the halfway line, really, when he's throwing this, but it, it's something they've obviously worked on. It's launched in, the captain, Desage gets on it, questions of a handball, I'm not sure the... Oh, he's pointing to his shoulder, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I no, think it, it did come off we'll his shoulder. We'll see it here on the replay. Ball's whipped in, the sang flicks it, and yeah, no, I, I think that's his shoulder. It's it's close, but it, it it's his shoulder. Again, it's some throw in, you know, from from near the half a line right into the box. It's it's a serious threat. And Niang to whip this in for the brace side. One hand again. It's an outswing out ball. The stash is up. It's kind of hit off everyone here. Max Ryan. Takes it down, looks for Perez. Perez, it's intercepted by the number eight, Amour. Does well, gets it back. Chance, and I think that's going to be, oh, thought that was a free in there. It was a bit of a late tackle, but Kelly's working hard here. And Lucas Vott can just pick it up for Dunleary. He dishes out the left-hand side to Adbisi. Adbisi inside to Ryan. Ryan, who looks like a new player after he got that knock in the first half, probably... Half time, get a right time for him, and it's going to be a throw in to Dunleary. Just in a second after this attack, we will give you the two sides. No changes at half time. Max Ryan, and that's going to be a silly, silly yellow card. He just no need to throw it out. No, that was, that was silly, silly. He's minding himself now for the remainder of the game. It's just, I suppose, reactions, isn't it? He puts that hand up. But yeah. they, when 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 Dunleary get in situations like that, they need to be a bit calmer, you know. The, the good position for a throw in, and they the just throw it away then. Yeah, they throw it away, and Mr. Casual, Sheriff Atibi in the Bray goal gives it out to Lonigan. Lonigan, who's very good in that first half, gives it away. Chance here, Perez, and he's offside. He's offside. It's good finish from Max Ryan, but it's offside. And just as there's a little break in play, we'll give you the sides. Number one for Bray, Sheriff Atibi. Number two, Otaniel Bakajika. Number three, Chris Lanigan. Number four, Abdel Adaraman. Number five, Abdullin Desange. Number six, Jude Tyndall. Number seven, Abdu Abu Masango. Number eight, Safani Amour. Number nine, Ushin Kelly. Number 10, Falu Niang. Number 11, Solomon Aladego. And on the Dunleary side, number one, Lucas Kelly Watt. Number two, Sean McNamara. As we we'll just have a little brief stoppage here as Ushin Kelly gets in behind the defence. It's well dealt with. Comes out to this left hand side, and there's a chance here. And Ryan is in. He has Perez in the middle. Ryan, it's a heavy touch, and DeSange is just going to use his body, but he doesn't use it. I think it's a penalty. It's a penalty. Max Ryan, it's that work rate we talked about. Ushin Kelly at the other end, working hard, but Colin Fortune, talk us through this. Yeah, Max Ryan done very, very well. Then he overhits it. The Sands trying to let it go out of play, and it's a trailing foot. Max just gets a touch of the ball to keep it in play. You know, the Sands throws it now, lazy legged, and he catches Max Ryan. You know, a silly, silly challenge. And yeah, you know, David Jemison, referee, right on top of things, I think, correctly pointed to the spot. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be the skipper, Erasmus Aji, to hit it. One thing about Sheriff Atibi in that Bray goal, he is a big figure. Oh, 
and it's saved. It's saved. I just mentioned the TV in that goal. We'll see it here on the replay. But it's probably a perfect height for the keeper, Colin. Yeah, no, it was a very, very good save. Um, there's not too much of a run-up, you know, and it's, you're 100% you're, you're right. It's the right height for the keeper. And he's made a great save to, to his right-hand side, and he's pushed that away for a corner kick. Still a little bit of defending do for Pereira here. Yeah, and, you know, if they can get over this little spell, it'll stand to them. Niang is a, is, is a bit close. It's going to be whipped in by the number 11 at BC. And the BC goes right into that middle. Number 7, Agatowski, is going to pick it up. But it's going to be held up here for, I think it's a, it's a head injury. Yeah, head injury. Um, good defending in there by Lonigan at the back post. Just got his head on it. Yeah, it was a poor penalty in the end, Adam, to be fair. You know, I don't like them short run-ups, you know. Dude. There's there's little confidence in it, and you can't get too much power in the ball. Yeah, and it looks like that Bray aren't going to settle, and they're going to make a change. It's the number 14. Connor Curry is going to come on for Bray. <laughs> we'll just wait on confirmation who is going to be coming off for Bray. Fourth official. I think it's going to be the number... 11 number 11 Solomon Aladeo is going to come off and number 14 Connor Curry is going to come on into the fray so you know maybe just something tactical they're tweaking it doesn't look like Curry's going to go over onto that left hand side he's gone over on the right so maybe just something tactical they're looking at Colin yeah Aladeo seemed okay coming off the pitch um, Obviously, the manager for Bray has seen something there, and he's made a change. And it's very early in this half, but he's seen something, and he's, he, he, he's acted. He's made the change. Yeah, as Bray just looked the counter attack, but that ball is going to go out of play for uh, Dunleary throw in. I suppose uh, probably finish. There's been just that much action since the the naming of the teams. I never got to finish it, but we'll go again on the Dunleary side. You have Lucas Kelly Watt, Sean McNamara, Jack Layler, Jonathan Masum. Nicole Lyons, Stephen Tate Brown, Casper Agatowski, Erasmus G, who missed that penalty earlier on, Max Ryan, Manuel Palares Perez, and Ao Adebisi. And there's just that one change on the Bray side. Sees Oladeo go off and Curry come on. As Curry picks up possession, as well dealt with by Jack Layler, the left full, and he wins a free kick for his troubles. No better, better start though. Obviously, whatever Derek McDonald and his coaching team said at halftime, Colin has worked because they've come out a different side in the second half. Yeah, no, they've been first of everything in this second half. They've been very, very good. You know, they've been on the front foot. They've not haven't let Bray settled. They've as done a Bray, to Bray. They've done what Bray have done to them. Yeah, as Kelly plays in behind for Curry. Curry, he's gonna look to win it. I think that's a goal kick, and it's well dealt with by Jack Layler. Yeah, but I, 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 I believe the Bray manager has seen that. You know, he's moved the, the, the midfielder, Masang, into his left wing position. So he has, he probably seen a threat there and he, he, he's tried to stifle it out. McNamara taking a chance there, but gets away with it. Gives it to Perez. Perez first time around the corner. And that's going to be a throw in. And I suppose <laughs> Dunleary, if they had a Nushin Kelly on their side, you'd be saying this is a great opportunity. But it's a chance for them to get good possession in the Bray half, which something was short and, and few between in the first half. But since this second half has started, they're like a different animal. Coming out, McNamara keeps the ball in play just about. Gives it to Ryan inside. Ryan, it's a heavy touch. Gives it back. But Dunleary will pick it up again at the back. It's back to McNamara. McNamara, it's going to be another throw in. And, you know, Bray are sitting deep. Yeah, they're not getting much time to play their game. They're not, you know, any time to try to play out, get a touch in the ball. You know, they'll be putting their pressure. And, you know, Dunleary have been really, really good sort of having this opening 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah, and that's a heavy touch. And I think Kelly's going to get there. Kelly, surrounded by two Dunleary players, but it's well defended there by the centre half. Number five, Nicole Lyons. And he's done very well. And to be honest, I think Kelly has made the most of that. 
We might see it again. It, we could get a replay, but I don't think there was much in that now, to be honest. And Kelly has made probably a bit more than what it was, Colin. Yeah, I, you know, I think it was a good tackle by the, the number five, Nickel Lines, and I think he's got the ball, unless he's caught him in the follow through or something that we haven't seen from here. But I, I thought it was a, a fair enough challenge. Yeah, and I think Lines is going to be booked for his troubles, but a bit harsh in my opinion. Yeah, he's he's gesturing to the referee that there was studs up, but I I didn't see it again. We're from we're at this distance away. The linesman is closer, and he probably seen something that we haven't. Yeah, but Lyons, who has been very aggressive in his approach to the game, has to watch himself. Yeah, he That's needs to be he's careful the second now. Second player from the Dunleary side booked. Max Ryan, the other who just kind of smacked the ball, keep it in play. Niang steps over this free kick for Bray. There's plenty of aim in the middle. It's a great ball in, but it's dealt with at that near post. Kelly, and that's a, a, a bicycle kicked attempt, but uh, well defended by the Dunleary number six, Tate Brown. Yeah, I <laughs> Kelly, I don't really know what that was. Was it a bicycle kick or overhead <laughs> kick or what it was? But um, yeah, it was a, it's a foul anyway, and you know, free kick for Dunleary. That's a great ball out by the, the goalkeeper. Brain looked to build for the first time really in this second half. 11 minutes gone. They still lead 1 0. There was a penalty on the Dunleary side, but it was saved by the goalkeeper. Missed by Erasmus G. Probably a poor penalty. Respect Curry gets it to substitute. Lyons does well to block it. Just got his body in way. Nathaniel drives. He's going to get past Lyons. And I think that's going to be. It might be a sending off, but I think Jem David Jemison, the referee, is going to let him away with this one. Yeah, he's been kinder, David Jemison. I think I think that definitely was a, a, a free kick and a buckle of offence. Yeah, to be honest, Colin, I think if he doesn't book him for the first one, he, it's probably a yellow card, you know. It's it's one of those. Yeah, yeah I think you're 100% in that now. He's on thin ice now for the remainder of this game. It's my, it might be something that the Dunleary bench might have to look at. Yeah, as Niang steps over this free kick, it's going to be a four-man wall. Just looking at it from behind here, there is a lot of room to curl it around if Niang does choose to. But that breeze might play a factor as well. Niang. He hits it. It's well struck. And what? He... he Kind of met it, yeah, met a I bit of work of it for him. I think he went to push it over, did he? And it went up in the air and he caught it on the second attempt. Yeah, we just see it on the replay. Yeah, he just goes to push it over and he kind of doesn't catch it as clearly as he liked. And he, we've seen in the first half with the goal, you know, it was again a high ball, just got caught. As the Camus goalkeeper in Ireland, I think it is a TB. You know, he's not phased. Perez is pressing him there and he's just letting the ball roll. He's happy enough to play with his feet as Desange plays it out to this right hand side. Looks for runners. Well picked up in the midfield. Ryan goes to press. And it's a good block there by AO Adebisi from the Dunleary side. But yeah. still, one thing feature of the Bray play, and that's going to be a free. Or I'm not sure the linesman has flagged for something here now and David Jemson's gonna go over and have a chat with him. Not for the first time in this second half. As the wind starts to pick up here in Lizzie Wollen, I see him gesturing of something of an elbow or that, but uh Yeah, I didn't see anything there Adam in that, but the linesman is looking straight across. Obviously something has happened. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be the substitute Connor Curry uh, along with the Dunleary man. I think it's just going to be a talking to though. It looks like no card is going to be shown. No, to be honest, I think they could just get on with this, Colin. If there's going to be no yellow cards, there's no, there's probably no need for such a lengthy chat. They've already wasted a minute or two discussing it for for nothing really. But we'll, you know, they've been good so far, the officials. So we'll leave it to them. No, oh, he's done well. Let's just get off oh, the Pierce game. Oh, Perez! Perez, he's caught! A TB! Lonigan! 
Oh, he oh. just gets back. And it's going to be a free out. But what it, you know, we we'll probably see it again here on the replay. It's the coolest keeper in Ireland, but Perez and Colin, he's very, very fortunate on this but occasion. He's got away with it again. He, he needs to be careful, you know, that, that time. I know they want to play, but, you know, there's playing and there's being silly. You know, sometimes you just have to defend your lines. You need to put the ball up the pitch and you need to just regroup and get on with it. And it is a cup final. So, you know, you can't afford mistakes like that mm. because you will be punished. Yeah, he, I'm sure he doesn't want to be remembered as the, the goalkeeper that, you know, cost Bray a, a final. Yeah, and look, he saved the penalty, so he's somewhat of a hero probably in his manager's eyes and, and the, his teammates' eyes. But, uh, you know, you can go hero to zero very quickly in the football world. Yeah, absolutely. But I think Dunleary have, have noticed that already because they've pressed him very, very early and they've pressed him at every opportunity. Yeah. Niang's in here. If he can take a touch, it's a great first touch. But And Kerry, the substitute, is it in? No, it's just gone over the bar, but it's a half chance as such. Yeah, it's a good opportunity there. You know, the, the right fullback done very well. Yeah, we pushing on there. As we just see Dunleary play out, but at the replay on your screens there, Kerry, yeah, no, he just never looks set to hit it. Strong challenge there, and it's going to be a free kick. David Jemson right on it. You know, I thought he just missed time that tackle. And there's going to be a book, and I'm not sure who to. I is it one of the substitutes but it, it's it's hard to tell in there as Dunleary look to make two more substitutions I think it's going to be the substitute Corey Hayes is going to come on and number 14 Eaton Power so we'll just wait and see who comes off and it's Adebisi Ayo Adebisi who had a stellar enough game And number three, Jack Layler has gone off as well. So, you know, Layler, I thought it was very solid and at a BC, so they've obviously just changed this whole left side, Colin. Yeah, they, they, they must have seen something here. They might want to have a go down this left side, but, um, you know, it hasn't happened for them yet, so he's not afraid to change things, to be fair, the manager. So let's see how they get on with it. Is that ball? It's, it's not the best delivery from the sub substitute. As his substitute partner... The two of them looking to cause havoc on this. That's a great ball by Max Ryan. And if you could just find the cross here, but it's not really. It's one thing probably both sides have lacked is that that left foot across into the box. As Curry, he's getting away from his man, but I think that should be a goalkeeper's ball all day. But again, Colin, they're just Dunleary. They're not making these opportunities in the final third count. No, they're getting some great opportunities there again. You know, the substitute, to be fair, Corey Hayes done very well to get down the line, but then just lacking the left foot to put that ball into the box. Yeah, and is that Perez on that far side winning another free kick for his side? But, uh, look, Dunleary, 63 minutes gone in the game, 1-0 down, missed penalty. You know, like There's a lot of positives they can take so far, but they just probably need a, that final pass and maybe a bit more composure, even. Yeah, very, very true, very true. Quickly in wide, wide areas, because they are getting bodies into the box. Perez and you know, Max Ryan are in there all the time. They just need to concentrate and just decision-making and picking the right pass to, to get that ball into the box. Yeah, as that ball's delivered, and it's hit off the, the Bray defender as Lonigan looks to clear. And he does get it away. Niang, it's a great turn again by the little number 10. There's an overload for Bray on this far side. They can find it, Curry. Not sure if he meant that or not, but I think that's McNamara coming over to clear, and it is. Yeah, as Ushin, and I think Ushin Kelly is going to take this one again, Carl. Yeah, yeah, we know what's coming up here, Adam. Good cover by Adam McNamara there, who seems to have slotted in as a centre half now. Yeah, maybe just that with the changes on this left hand side, they've, they've had to twig things at the back because, you know, I suppose they probably have to go a bit more attacking as well as try and be defensively sound. Yeah, absolutely. Kelly launches it in. That should be dealt with. And it is dealt with, I think, McNamara again. So he's he's doing all the defensive work, it looks like. Yeah, no, he had to get there. He had to get to it. He got his foot and good clearance. Niang, it's a great run, but I think that should be the keeper's ball. 
Kelly Watt throws it out to McNamara. Perez is, and Agatowski were ahead of him, but McNamara, his touch let him down on that occasion. Yeah, poor touch out in front. I think he got confused, took his eye off the ball, nearly tackled himself. And the only thing is now that Ushin Kelly has another chance to, to launch this into the box. And I don't know if, if he's getting tired, he, his shoulders and arms must be getting tired, and he's asking Paul Tone, the assistant referee, <laughs> what's left. So, But it's a bit early to be at that. Yeah, absolutely. Another big throw in. McNamara again, he's done all the defensive work. No, he's done very well there again, so he has. Max no. Ryan picks it up, goes back to McNamara again. Agatowski, two, pressed by two Bray defenders. This should be the goalkeeper's ball, and ooh, <laughs> he's lucky. Oshin Kelly was about. Yeah, he had it and then lost it. Yeah, and Kelly was, and Kelly was, to be fair to Oshin Kelly, he was there. The Sanj, and it's a mix up. And this, the substitute he is, is in. Does well, just sets it back to Perez. Perez, quick feet, looking to get back on that right foot. He done very well, Perez. He, he showed did. some silky skills there on the end line. Uh, Abderrahman had to come across there. Oh, and it's going to be a goal kick, I thought. So, first look. I know the referee is closer than us, Colin, but I, th I thought that was a corner kick. I thought it was good work from Perez. Yeah, I thought it was a corner kick too. Perez is unlucky there not to get something from that. I thought he done very well in the end line. Dusange takes a chance, and I think he's going to win the free kick. You know, and it, it's probably that's good pressure from Deliria. I know they're unfortunate to give away the free kick, but it's you know it's it's way way better. And look, we were on about Ushin Kelly in, in the first half about his work rate and. 66 minutes in, Colin, you're right. It's very hard to maintain it, and he's cramping up. Yeah, he's starting to cramp up already, and Bray won't want to lose him. It's not it's not a, as much as the, the work rate he puts in up top, but it's his throw-ins as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a big part of what Bray are about. Yeah, as Bray got his back underwear here, Curry's looking for a run, but Kelly's making the run inside. He's going to get this. He probably settled for a throw-in. Oh, he doesn't. He whips the ball in. It's a good ball. McNamara again. He's doing all that defensive work for Dunleary and that last dish stuff, but that's a strike. Oh, uh, probably two half. And he is taking no prisoners today. Agatowski has felt every bit of that challenge, but it's it's solid and it's fair, and it's going to be a McNamara throw in on the right hand side for Dunleary. 67 minutes gone here in the CUFAI Invitational Cup final. Bray Institute for Further Education took the lead after nine minutes. Falu Niang, header at the back post. You know, IADT Dunleary had a chance to equalise from the penalty spot. Saved by the Bray keeper. And this is how it stands. Bray had much of the possession in the first half. Dunleary came out in the second half. Had been very comfortable on the ball. Probably lacking that final bit of of execution, but there's a chance here for them on the left-hand side, and it's the substitute. Hayes gets in behind, looking, and that's going to be a free kick in, and probably the right, assi right decision from David Jemison. Yeah, a bit of a wild challenge by the right full there. You know, to be fair to Corey Hines, it was a good touch pass to the defender, and he just drove in. So, you know, he should have held himself up, and, you know, it's a free kick in a dangerous position for Dunleary. And I'm just looking there, and Kelly is down again. Yeah, it, you know, if Kelly, it's a, it's a second time cramping, uh, I can't imagine them going to be on the pitch for much longer. I know Bray are going to do their best not to take him off, but, uh, you know, if a fella is cramping that badly after 68 minutes, how is he going to be after after 80, after 90? Yeah, no, he's been struggling for the last five or ten minutes, you can see that. No, even even taking the throw-ins, he's, he's going from side to side of the pitch, and, you know, and then he's working so hard up front. You know, you can't, you can't sustain that for 90 minutes, and he's feeling the effects now. Yeah, good chance for Dunleary whenever the game restarts to get a ball into the box, and they're going to be down to 10 men, Bray, due to Ushin Kelly going off. Once you receive attention, as we know, you have to go off, and <laughs> thankfully it's not like the Premier League where it's that kind of what is a one-minute rule, but mm. he's still going to have to wait for his chance to come back on. It may be a loss as well because he's a big guy and he does his defensive duties very well down there. So they're down a good defensive guy in the in the box defending. 
Yeah, as Manuel Perez comes over to take this free kick for Don Leary. Good chance so with a strong breeze with him. Bit of organizing in the wall, a bit of... <laughs> no one knows what way to be, I suppose. As Perez delivers it. And that's just going to be over hit. That's a poor, poor ball in a good position, Colin. Yeah, that's a poor decision. I think he was shooting from there. You know, the, the way he was shaped up and that, that's what it looked like. But it was a poor decision. All them bodies in the box. Center Haas won't be too happy about coming 60 yards up the pitch and, you know, Perez going and just kicking it over the bar like that. Yeah. Don Leary, to be fair to them, they're going to keep that press on. And Niang does well to win it. Foul for his side, but McNamara... It's been very impressive, and I suppose there's been great performances from both sides today, but particularly McNamara, his defensive work has been very good so far. Yeah, no, he certainly has. He's certainly done well, and he's good. He's center half at times as well, coming in from that right full position. Yeah, Hayes looks to pick this one up and keep it in, and he does, but but to be honest to him, or to be fair to him, it's probably better off being a corner, Colin. <laughs> Well, with Kelly on the pitch, he probably, <laughs> he probably knew that Kelly was back on the pitch. He said, I'll kick this out for a corner instead of a throw-in. You know, that there is that famous incident of Arsenal playing against Stoke where, uh, I think it was Arsenal anyway, where they decided, you know, corner was better off to having Rory the lap throw it into the box. But we see if Bray can punish Hayes, whether it was a mistake or pure genius. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Niang is on this, and he puts in a good ball as well, to be fair. Niang whips it in. I think it's going to be met. It's well met. And that is something that we might see in Athlone GA across the road, but certainly not here. Yeah. As Bray look or Bray looked to get back into the defensive shape. And that's just poor from Dunleary. They've tried to catch them, catch some coal, but nothing doing so far. No, they've just they've, they've tried a few things. They've been good in spells, but the last couple of minutes they've just took their foot off the gas again. And you know, Bray look comfortable. It's very hard to see where Dunleary are going to get a goal from the way it's going. And that ball's just going to be lobbed over the top for the right full. He does well. Kelly's on the outside. If you can find him, Hayes is. That's going to be a corner kick. It's very well done by Bakajika on that right hand side for Bray that's going to be a corner is it going to be a tr oh yeah it's no it's going to be a corner kick and Niang is there they can work it short there's only one Deliri man coming out again yeah they're not they don't seem to be in a hurry to take this they're you know they're taking their time they're wanting to up they don't need to chase the game so they're not in a hurry here yeah Niang again steps over it between himself and Kelly, they've shared the set pieces between them. Niang whips it in again. It's met at the front post by Kelly. Drops here. Amur. I think that's going to be another corner kick, and it is. Yeah, no, he done well there. To be fair to him, the number eight. You know, he kept the ball down, kept it on target, and he got a corner kick, another corner kick out of it. And Niang is going to take this again. Yeah, and certainly just seeing the replay here on the screen, I think it was Lions in that middle. For Dunleary, gets a clear, out for the corner kick. Good opportunity for Niang again. Probably the delivery there a minute ago, not up to scratch this time. Whips it in, it's a better delivery, it's going to be met. Same again, at, it's a great block. I think that, I'm not sure who that was, it appears there was this substitute. Hayes, but Niang again, great defensive work. Niang to Kelly. Kelly looks to take on the, his man. It's a bit early to be going to corners, Adam. Yeah, it is, and I think it's going to be a free out to Dunleary. Yeah, I think the, the referee is... Yeah, he, I think he's overruled his assistant here. Yeah, I'm not sure. a free kick. I think there's been a late tackle on, on their captain, on the captain of Dunleary here. Yeah, if you've just joined us, 74, nearly 75 minutes gone. Bray Institute of Further Education are leading 1-0 thanks to a Falu Niang goal after nine minutes 
Oye DT Dunleary, should I say, had a chance to equalize from the penalty spot, but it was saved by the break keeper, and it, it, that's how it has remained so far, as the ball's launched up forward. It's a battle for it in the middle here. Curry's gonna pick it up on the right-hand side. The two substitutes from either side, and Hayes just puts it out. Bray certainly in no rush, and I think Kelly's gonna come over and take this one again. Yeah, this is, you know, going into the box again, the big guy, Dosange is up from the back. Abrahami is up from the back, and this is going into the box, and you know, it's important to literally get the, the first contact on this ball. Yeah, and we haven't really mentioned Dosange in this second half at all. He was so effective from all these, and he's won it there. McNamara again, and that's a great clearance. Mm -hmm. He had to do it, Colin. Yeah, no, good. He, you know, he covers very, very well there. The center house are challenging the air, and he's been tasked with coming around and covering in behind him, and he's done it at all occasions, he has, to be fair to him. But going back on them three corners just before that, you know, three occasions that the ball was cleared by Dunleary and it was picked up by Bray at the edge of the box and have had unopposed shots from the edge of the box at the Dunleary goal. They need to get somebody covering that or blocking that area. Yeah, it's just Umar. He, he's just sat at the edge of the Dunleary box and I, I see Perez sitting there now and as McNamara wins that header, but it's going to fall to the centre half. It's played across and Kerry was in there. But it's very well worked by Adaraman at that left-hand side. The centre half up for the throw-in. Yeah, it was a good position, so it was. Yeah, we see it on replay of McNamara. He just kind of headers up in the air. It falls to Adaraman and Curry's there. But it's well dealt by, by the keeper at the near post as Niang has a chance to probably suit him better with this in-swinger now to put pressure really on the Dunleary keeper. Yeah, you can see this going in on top of the keeper here, so you can he'll have to deal with that. Bit of movement in the centre. Ooh. It's gone short. It's back out to Niang. It's a great ball in. Kelly's on. And it's missed. Yeah. yeah. Eaton Power, Eaton Power in behind Lonigan. Could could he have spoke to could he spoke to Lonigan to, to leave it? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. He's kind of always stretching for it and the you know you can see his manager down at the touchline. He's a frustrated figure down there because uh, but Kelly's in here. If he can get to it. Ooh. We seen it in a game yesterday where the keeper was booked for picking the ball outside, outside. his box, but he's uh what on this occasion yeah. just rolls into it. He had the angles right there. He is he is just can't get to that. And there's gonna be no no rush from Bray with just thirteen minutes to go less of the CUFAI Invitational Cup final. No, Dunleary just seem to be running out of ideas here for the last five or ten minutes. They need to get back into this game. You know, they're only one down. They need to start being more of an attacking threat. And that's going to be a free out. And you know, Look, Colin, you've probably been in this position a thousand times yourself, one nil down, last ten minutes. You know, what? what is, as, as a player and as, as a coach, what are you trying to get? What point are you trying to get across to your side, you know, to try and get this equaliser? We're trying to get them to be but more of an attacking threat, to be honest, yeah. you know. Like they look they look threat they look like a threat with Perez and Max Ryan up top and they're just not getting enough ball to them. They're trying to play in the wrong areas, they're playing back here in the in their own half and you know, they're not getting anywhere with it. So let's have a look at plan B, see can we go forward that bit quicker, see can we pick up seconds off Ryan and Perez. Yeah, and that, that might even be just a uh, maybe a change of shape or, or, or something, just anything to to kind of, you know, it's been too easy for Bray. It's been comfortable as, you know, Agathowski, they, they haven't really got himself, Ryan and, and Perez. And I, and I see Ryan has come out to this left-hand side, but, you know, that's that ball's going to run out of play. But, yeah, you're right. It, 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 they need that, that attack and threat. And I know there's going to be tired legs. And mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to be another substitution here for Dunleary. We have to wait and see who's coming on. I think it's Agatowski, the player that's going to be coming off here for Dunleary. And it's number 16, Dara Tahi, is going to come on. So that's Kasper Agatowski has gone off. And the number 16, Dara Tahi, has come on. So maybe, you know, they have to do something. And, and this is what Derek McDonald has decided to do. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see how this works. 
but it, you know he's he's seen he needs to do something he's tried something so let's hope it works for him yeah as Bray looked to, to build up they might be winning one nil with 10 minutes to go but they're still keeping to their to their ethos playing the ball out from the back the ball drops he's in Perez composure oh he probably should have went across the keeper there Colin yeah definitely you know I actually to be a think it's a there. corner kick yeah there seems to be a touch somewhere but yeah that maybe he was trying to go across the keeper and it got a flick did it yeah I think yeah. it just hits the defender Abderrahman mm. it's hard to tell from that camera angle but Paul Tone and the, the assistant referee on the far side is, is very close to the action as the ball's whipped in and that's oh oh he seems to duck the captain seemed to duck in the box it seemed to be we'll falling we'll on his head we'll see it here again on the, on the replay but it's the captain of G who missed that penalty and he had a chance to oh he has to finish that he just doesn't he just doesn't connect with the ball to be fair to him yeah that's an opportunity unless he thought the guy in front of him was going to get a touch in the ball that's a big chance again as the ball's whipped in this time with not as much conviction and he Ball the braid struggle to get it clear. G ball's played out and Curry's on side here if he can be found. But McNamara again. McNamara done very well again. Yeah, his positioning has just been outstanding and he's kind of null the curry or the curry, should I say, the the braid threat in, in the second half. But you know, mm. they, they need to get the ball forward and that's another big chance missed from them set pieces. That was Perez, great bit of skill. He has three players, it's a 4v3, if they can make use of it. And he is just tries to, I don't know if he tries to take it down or flick it on, but it's just not good enough. No, it just, it's just not happening for them. You know, that's a great opportunity again. And I think that's the story of the match. It's just decision making and quality and execution. It's just not coming off with Dunleary. Yeah, and you know, if you're if you're in that Dunleary team, as oh, that's going to be a free in, and I think it's David Jamison. You know, he's probably right because it was a studs up challenge. Yeah, and if the captain's not, if the captain Gisang isn't. Uh, they need to calm. Yeah, they, they need really to calm, calm him down, down, calm here. down a bit here. Is right because I don't think he was going to book him or that. I think it was the reaction that got him booked. Yeah, and look we. We see it in, in modern football. You can't react like that because it is a bookable mm. offence. And to be honest, with the reaction, he's he's probably lucky to stay on the pitch because yeah. the tackle, you know, it was studs up. But yeah. anyway, we don't want like to see anyone sent off as Max Ryan. I thought he actually sh probably should have hit the penalty earlier, but you know, he's over this set piece now, and there's a great chance to level the game. Yeah, it just needs to hit the target from here. It's a, it's a nice position. Just hit the target. Ryan. Oh, and no. that's just, yeah. Yeah, you can probably <laughs> hear by our reaction. It's just. Yeah, it's frustrating it up here. You really can imagine is. how the players are down there. You know, they're working so hard to get themselves into these positions. And, you know, it's just decision making and execution again. And look, you nearly feel bad for them because they're doing everything right. Bar that, look final pass or, or final shot but you know the, 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 there's 10 minutes that the, all you need is a second to score and one chance as that ball is delivered in by the substitute it's going to fall to the number 6 here Max Ryan is on the left hand side he's going to have to come and collect it yeah there seems to be a bit of a spring now in the in the step of Dunleary finally with about 5-6-7 minutes to go but they still need to start getting bodies around the box. Yeah, they do as the ball's whipped in. And Ryan, that's going all the way in. And it's a goal. Oh. It's a goal. Max Ryan has equalised for ID, IADT Dunleary. And what a goal it is too. I'm not sure if the, ke the keeper just kind of misses the flight of the ball. But I suppose it's the story of the game. Colin, what has happened? Yeah, I'm just waiting here to look at it. I've seen it here again. Yeah, the keeper seemed to meet, misjudge it all together. You know, unless the wind caught it, you know, we can't really see that or know that from here. But, yeah, it was it was a poor decision by the goalkeeper. He stood in his line, he, it was just coming into his arms. Yeah, and it's one all here with, you know, six minutes less plus additional time to go. Dunleary, 
who we were just probably saying how they haven't got the men into the box, haven't had that bit of quality, and they're level, but it's a chance here now as Bray attack down this right-hand side. Great flicking behind, and it's well dealt with by the substitute, number 14, Eaton Power. Yeah, good recovery. He dived in at the start, and, you know, he recovered well, and another tread here. He looks like a big boy as well that can defend the line, defend his box well because they need that. Yeah. As Niang comes across to whip this ball in, it's a deep delivery. Lonigan's up, keeper. Yeah, keeper should have it. Keeper done well here. Yeah, Geeson really needs to get out of there because we just spoke about he could have been sent off for his reaction literally three or four minutes ago. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's in the keeper's face again. He needs to be very, very careful. He can't lose his discipline. You know, he'd let his whole team down. He's the captain of the team. As the ball is played in behind the curry, can he get there? He's worked very hard since he's come on, to be fair to him. Yeah, and no, he's, he's done well. I thought actually he had won the throw in for his side, but it's given the Delaney away. You know, and it, Braid, they must be frustrated because the, they've worked so hard to maintain their position in the game. And it's a it's a cross come shot, really, that has. has beating them Colin. Yeah, it just shows what we know about the game Adam we're asking Dunleary to get more bodies into the box and nobody in the box your man crosses from the sideline it goes into the goal yeah but he should have told us that before the game <laughs> but anyway there's four minutes plus additional time I presume we'll have three or four minutes especially with this stoppage so late in the half yeah from Bray looking you know having the game under control to now being one all looking like it's going to go to extra time and you know how are they going to regroup and how are they going to try and go and score again because they're going to have to do that yeah th look we've seen penalties earlier on today but you know you know we hate to see games go to penalties because they're, they're a lottery I believe the fourth official, when he puts up his board in a minute, will give us three minutes of additional time. Unless there is any more stoppages, we'll have to wait and see. But as for now, there is six minutes left of this contest. The CUFAI Invitational Cup Final between Bray Institute of Further Education and IADT Dunleary. As Dunleary have the chance to put the ball into the box. And that is not going to be good enough for them as Bray looked to muster a counter-attack. And to be fair, it was two players going for the ball. Kelly comes out second. Balls flicked down the line here. Curry can be in. If you can find Lyons gets across and he does very well to just clear the ball. Yeah, and he done well there, so he did the defender. But here we go. Here's the chance. Could be the winner and losing of the game. We talked about this throw-in. Here comes the three centre halves. I'd love to see what mileage they done today, Adam. Yes, uh, hopefully they have GPS. We'll have to get that stat after. Kelly with the long throw again. It's fired in, flicked on. And it's a goal! It's a goal! And I think it, I think it's the centre half. It's Niang. It's Niang coming in from the far side. Is it? It's Niang, I, I believe. We'll it have is to Niang. Get a re it is Niang. And it's going to be... And it's, it's absolute carnage here. But I think that, yeah, the goal is, is given, as far as we're aware. Yeah, and the referee has given five minutes of additional time now. So we are looking at 2-1, and it is that man again, Falun Niang, with the goal. Yeah, he done well. He ghosted in from the left-hand side. He wasn't tracked, and... There was a good flick on, I think it, from it was from Desange De again. And we're just looking at it again. Yeah, Desange again, like great flick on. And Mac, you know, Niang comes in and McNamara for once, you know, lost the runner. And it was a good finish into the corner of the net. You know, it's so cruel for Dunleary here. Yeah, and they've worked so, so hard to get back into the game. But, you know, it's that Ocean Kelly, it's the throwing. And the Sands, like they have three big centre halves on the pitch, so even when the ball comes into the box, it is very hard to deal with it. 
but the, at the rate it comes in and the speed and it just caused absolute carnage and Niang again he just loves hanging at that back post and he makes his way across to the centre and bang goal 2-1 yeah absolutely like Kelly must have put in about 30 to 40 crosses you know throw-ins long throws and the laws of possibility they're gonna it's gonna fall to one player sometime and that was it and it's just cruel and unleary that it's to happen in the 90th minute and they've got a goal from it yeah and Colin in a minute I'm gonna have to ask you for your mint plus player of the match look there's been uh, there's been many players on the pitch I suppose that have you know given their all you're looking at Max Ryan you're looking at McNamara you know you're looking at Niang with them two goals so you know it's it's you know it could be any it's a toss of a coin really who you give it to yeah no there, there's been a number of players on both sides that have done very very well you know we'll just hold out a minute or two and we'll get the thinking caps on and we'll, we'll, we'll see who deserves it yeah and plus there could be another goal in this game yet you never never know and that's it yeah and it looks like the keeper is going to come off here and I'm not sure who that is gone and goal I think it might be the substitute Yeah, I think there's going to be another substitute for the Leary here. The goalkeeper is going to have to come off. Lucas Kelly Vaught, and I think it's an outfielder going in goal as Shane Lincoln gets ready to enter the field of play. Yeah, it looks like Lucas Kelly Vaught, he, he, it must be his wrist yeah he would, must have got a clash in there with the chaos I, did, I didn't notice it but yeah he looks like he's in a lot of pain alright and he's coming off here yeah it just shows you though Niang his uh, his willingness I suppose to to get to the ball and he, he's ended up and it's a bit, I suppose it's bravery more than anything to get to the ball and the keepers got hurt unfortunately on this occasion yeah yeah it was just a pure accident just seen Niang got booked there for his celebration in the corner, but we'll allow him that one. <laughs> yeah, no. 90 odd minute winner. Like, look, there's been five minutes additional time given by the referee, but I presume and I'm sure that we'll go well into 97, 98 minutes here today. Yeah, the, the stoppage has been about three three minutes already, so they still have a little bit of time, Dunleary and they're yeah. seeking to get anything back here and they're going to pump the ball forward here but that should be the keepers and he's just about staying in the box and it was that side there yesterday as well that happened but it'd be interesting to see now Colin whether they'd go long or look to play it short because that's the way they've played for the whole game but they've decided to go long yeah, now I think it was a good decision yeah not at this stage of the game you know, sometimes you can really fall into that trap, though. But I think Kelly is just about onside as McNamara tries to get back around him. Kelly, he's going straight to the corner. McNamara better be careful not to foul him. McNamara's done well so far. Kelly's done well. And that's going to be another corner to Bray. Yeah, he's done very well there, Kelly. Going yeah, up to no. play and taking his corner. And 20 minutes ago, look, we were saying about how tired he is. And the Larry man, number four... Massim needs to be careful now because he's arguing a point with the referee but the assistant referee and the referee aren't going to change your mind on this no just stay disciplined no, it, was, it was a corner kick I don't know what he's looking for there Niang again Bray not looking to keep the ball into the corner they feel like th there's another goal there for him especially when Dunleary have a substitute outfielder in goal Ball's whipped in, Lonigan's there, that's going to be out for a goal kick and it's a chance to get forward now for Dunleary. Yeah, good header by Lonigan. He, he, you know, it's important he killed the game there at that, or killed the, put the ball out of play and he's done that. Just running out of time now, Dunleary. Ball's hoof long. 
Flicked on by the substitute who just entered the field, number 13, Shane Lincoln. That's going to be offside, and it's another chance now for Dunleary to put bodies forward and get the ball into the box. Nearly a ch last chance saloon here now. Just need something to fall in around the box for them. Yeah, and it's kind of at an awkward angle as well. You nearly need to move the ball wide to go forward here, but it's going to be hip into the box. McNamara is there, but it's going to fall to the Bray man. And that's just half kind of slice cleared. Bray, they're battling hard. Kelly's on side, if you can get control of this. Falou's in. There's players are cramp. Niang is going to get there. I think he's going to keep it in as well. Oh no, the ball has just run out. It's going to be throwing deep into the Dunleary half for Dunleary. That's not where they want the ball at this stage of the game. No, and they have another player down. I think it's the number six, Tate Brown, is down with cramp. And look, they've put everything into this game, but it just hasn't really worked out for them so far. And you know, we're on about the the Bray work rate and everything, and the probably the Bray work rate has just got them through the game. Yeah, big time. They've kept they've kept going. To be fair, you know they've worked very very hard. You know Kelly Kelly was going down with cramp after thirty minutes. Sorry, after about sixty minutes, and he's kept going. Uh, yeah. You know. Balls play forward here. Lonigan's up to win it. McNamara's going to take his throw in. Ball hooked forward. Yeah, as Bray looked to just launch this ball in. Kelly's taking the throw-ins from very deep now just to try and keep Bray in the half, but it's going to be an offside. And just in a minute, Colin, I'm going to have to get a final answer for a player to match off, yeah? Yeah, it's been, it's been a difficult call, Adam, to be fair. There's been some good players from both sides. You know, McNamara has been very, very good with Dunleary at the back. You know, same as the number five for, for Bray. Desange has been ex excellent, but today I think you know he scored two goals to looks like win his team this match, and his all around play was very very good. So my man of the match today is number ten, Falau Niang, for yeah, Bray. Probably fully deserved as well, but there could be a change in the scoreline. But I don't think so. As Curry just flicks it on, Dunleary have to get the ball forward, but they're not going to get a forward doing this. The keeper's out. It's cleared. Ryan needs to get something on it. He does. Desange does well to come in, but it's not going to fall to a Dunleary man. We have no idea, I suppose, what's left due to the length and stoppages. We're at the discretion of the referee how much time he wants that on. I'm not sure if the ball actually... Oh, it did, it did. The linesman, or sorry, the assistant referee has decided it did not come into play. So it's going to be Lions again with the throw in. He has a player back if he wants to use him. Probably better off using him, but he goes forward instead. Desange, Dunleary piling on the pressure here in these late stages. Lions to line it up. We c does he have a long throw? He's aiming, it, he's aiming like he does. Adam is coming into the box. It's not as good as Kelly's no. though, I suppose. No. Kelly just gets that clear. And it's all over. And Bray Institute of Further Education have won this year's CUFAI Invitational Cup. And Colin, it has to be said, their work rate has probably got them through rather than any moment of real quality, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as a team, they work very, very hard. And, you know, we, we said it the whole way during the game. The pressure to apply to Dunleary back four in midfield was immense. And, you know, that's what created the chances. And... You know, and Kelly, to be fair, up top was very, very good. And Yang, the man of the match, was excellent. You know, scored two goals. But, you know, over the 90 minutes, 95 minutes plus, you know, I, I, I think they're just rewards for their win. And well done to them. But commiserations to Dunleary. It was an excellent game.
Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it was a, a superb game. You know, it was it was probably a great way to, to end the week of finals. We seen some great goals, some great players, drama, sending offs, penalties, penalties scored, penalties missed. So you know, what a way to just to end and to really just it really just shows you how good college football is and is becoming. Yeah, no, absolutely. We said it before the game, you know. College football, the, the quality is getting improving every year and it's been very, very good against th this year. We've had a great week of finals. You know, the quality on display was very, very good. You know, the credit must go to the committee of the college and universities, you know, that are putting in, w put in some amount of work behind the scenes to, to, to make these days, you know, as successful as they are and to supply, to, su to provide you know football at, at at this level for so many people throughout third level university yeah and firstly before there's any trophy left at all we will have I suppose Collins nominated min plus player of the match and the referees will have their presentation as well I think we need to mention the referees this week. To, you know, they really have been very, very good. You know, it's been a long week for them as well. You know, it's been three grueling days, a lot of football. You know, some of, as you said, there's been penalties, misses. There's been extra time. There's, you know, and um, they've they've been outstanding today. David Jemison, you know, Paul Tone and James Murray. They've been very, very good, and they've been like that all week. Credit to them. You know, the quality is good. Yeah, and Falau is going to collect his iPhone XR from the Min Plus sponsors. And I'm, look, he was very good. He got two goals and his overall work rate and everything, as were his teammates, was very, very impressive. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a very good pl player. Technically, he's very, very good, but he works very hard as well. This whole Bray, Bray team, are, that's what they're about, you know. There's some very good individuals, but as a team, you know, they're, they're, they're really immense and the work rate and the fitness levels. Was was a credit to them, and it has to be mentioned as well. Like this is the the f the fourth and fifth tier competition. So these teams, for the quality that was in the game and the quality of player that was on show, as Dunleary go up and collect their runners up medals and commiserations to them. But fair play to them for for putting on a spectacle and making a competitive game with a bit of quality. Yeah, no, there was quality on both sides. It was a very very good game. You know, there was a stage a couple of years ago where, where the, f the you know the quality wasn't as good as this. The the fitness levels were not as good, and you know, and the games were difficult to watch. But these games, every game, you know, this week has been very very good watch with a lot of quality, some great goals, some very very good players at all levels, and you know, and that's what we were saying. This is where college football is going, and you know, we need to keep kicking on. We need to keep improving. We need, you know, more people behind the scenes to get involved, and we need to keep drive be keep driving on college's football. Yeah, it looks like Ushin Kelly just leading the way for the Bray side. As they get their winner's medals with Desang at the back, ready to lift that Invitational Cup. I know we've said it no times, but it's some weapon to have, isn't it? This long throw of oh, it's, of it's unbelievable. Kelly. It is, it, and you, like you're nearly shocked. And, and I knew before the game, having you know played against them, and coached against them, how dangerous it is. But seeing them from the halfway line launch it into the box is, is something special. Uh, as the sign comes and collects his medal puts it around his neck and he's going to be handed the trophy.
And there you have it, your CUFAI Invitational Cup Champions for 2024, Bray Institute of Further Education. And I suppose a massive thank you to everyone behind the scenes at Quinn AV, Anthony Quinn, for a great production this week. And look, hopefully I'll be back next year for a big spectacle and fair play to everyone at the CUFAI for, for having a great week of games and a great week of performances. And look, I'm looking forward to the next occasion. And I suppose the league finals is next. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to everybody. It's been a great week and we're, let's wrap it up here from Lizzie Woolen. <laughs>